Give me justice, O God, and plead my cause against a nation that is faithless. From the deceitful and cunning, rescue me. For you, O God, are my strength. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My friends, as we gather here for this Mass on this fifth Sunday of Lent, you notice that the statues behind me are covered up. This is that beginning of what's called Passion Tide, the week that leads up to Palm Sunday. And I called Monsignor Dan this morning to, have, to invite him to uh, participate in the Holy Mass with us this day. And so we're very, very happy to have him. And welcome, Monsignor. Right. As we gather here for this Holy Mass, let us begin first by taking a moment to quiet our hearts. Let us acknowledge our sins, and in so doing, we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I've done and what I've failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, there are Mary ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, Amen. and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Your Son handed himself over to death through our, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them, and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them. O oh, my people, I will put my spirit in you, that you may live, and will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness that you may be revered. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord, my soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn, let Israel wait for the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. For the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you, whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also, through his Spirit dwelling in you. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will never die. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Now a man was ill, Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. So the sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you, and you want to go back there. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. He said this and then told them, Our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death, while they thought he meant ordinary sleep. So then Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died, and I'm glad for that, and I'm glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary sat at home, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house, comforting her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, 
my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> So I'm just going to offer a few words today in light of the gospel. It's a powerful, powerful gospel reading full of metaphor and analogy and a true story on top of that. Now, I want to just kind of lay out the scene, if you will. <clears throat> Where was Jesus when the messengers had gone out to find him? Jesus, if you looked on the previous chapter of John, which would be chapter 10, you would know that just prior to him getting word that Lazarus was ill, just prior to that, Jesus had been in Jerusalem with his disciples, and he was preaching the word, and he was rebuking the Pharisees and doing all of those things that got him into a lot of trouble, and they, in Jerusalem, had picked up stones to kill him. And he left the city because of that. And when he left the city, he went back to the place where John the Baptist had baptized him on the banks of the Jordan, which is away from Jerusalem, east of Jerusalem by quite a way. And so when he receives message, Bethany, we heard in the reading, is only two miles away from Jerusalem. So basically what they're, what Jesus, what they're asking Jesus to do, he was just rushed out of the city what they're asking him to do is to go right back into the city and make his way through and end up in Bethany. And the disciples, of course, are scared. They were almost killed. And they said, well, if he's only asleep, they're looking for a reason to not have to go. And so that's one piece. The second piece is the timing of it all. And I find it absolutely fascinating, almost like Jesus is being kind of nonchalant because he hears of the of he hears of the uh, illness of Lazarus, and he cares for his friend Lazarus, but then he waits two days to go. So this whole scenario, he's far away from Jerusalem, now you know hours and hours and hours of walking, and he and Jerusalem is death uh, is excuse me Lazarus is deathly ill, and Jesus waits two days before he even gets up and goes. And when he finally arrives in Bethany, Lazarus has been dead for four days. So he'd already been dead for four days, and Jesus had waited to, you know, within that. And I guess when I picture all of that, it's kind of confusing. It's a little exasperating, because Martha is beside herself in grief, Mary's beside herself in grief, and Jesus is just kind of, pretty at ease about it all. 
and he's pretty easy going about it all. And it reminds me, in a certain way, of when of the time that all of the 12 disciples were in the boat, and that stormy sea comes up, and Jesus is taking a nap. <laughs> he's sleeping. And they're worried, they're like terrified that they're about to get swallowed up by the sea, and the whole time Jesus is sleeping. And what does that say? He's not aloof. He's not ignorant, obviously. The key here are the words that he says in the gospel. I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus knows who he is. He knows his power. He knows what he's going to do, and he knows how to do it, and he's completely calm because of it. Everybody else, on the other hand, is terrified or absolutely beside themselves in grief. And I think there's a powerful, powerful lesson there. Jesus knows who he is. He knows what he's going to do. And the lesson, I think, is the people who follow him. What kind of faith? You know, if we really, truly, truly believed the way that Jesus believes or the way that Jesus knows how he is, I think we would have to ultimately try to take the same posture as Jesus. It's not that Jesus doesn't care. When he finally gets to Bethany, he weeps at the death of his friend Lazarus. He weeps at the pain that Martha and Mary are in. Even though he knows exactly what he's going to do, he empathizes, he cares, he loves those people so much that he is absolutely one with their pain, even though he knows he's going to raise Lazarus up. For us, in our circumstances, in our lives, in our trials, in our tribulations, with our fears, with our hopes, with all of these things, if we can strive to have the same kind of faith that knows that Jesus is the resurrection, that knows that no circumstance is beyond his control. The people in Bethany had no idea what was coming to them, had no idea that Jesus would be bringing new life, but Jesus himself knew. And so we should look at him and say, Lord, trust you. Jesus, I trust in you. Lord, I believe. It doesn't mean I won't have pain. It doesn't mean I won't be scared. It doesn't mean I won't suffer. But at the end of the day, there's going to be, we pray, an underlying peace that we know and we hope and we trust that Christ will bring new life out of our hard circumstances. Amen. And so, my friends, together we pray, we make our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so, my friends, we turn now to God our Father as we look for his guidance, for his support, and for his care. With these, our prayers and petitions. We pray for our catechumens and candidates, those who will be received into the church, even if it isn't at Easter this year. We pray for Sabrina, for Nick, for Joelle, for David, for Anna, and for Luca. For them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our government officials, that those who are tasked with leading our country and all government officials throughout the world, that they may do so truly, truly putting the needs of the people as the most important factor. For our government officials, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for vocations to the priesthood, to religious life, to the diaconate, that God may bless the church with many, many vocations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the poor. We pray for the sick. We pray for the homebound, especially during this period of pandemic illness, that they may know support, that they may know comfort, and that they may know good health in mind, body, and soul. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our families, especially those who are affected with unemployment and underemployment during this uh, trying time in our history, that they may be blessed with abundance in faith and in goods. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the dead. We pray for the holy souls in purgatory, that our mass and our prayers may hasten their purification. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the Rinaldi family, for Leah, Caden, Tobiah, and the whole Rinaldi family, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those intentions which we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, you are the way, the truth, and the life. You are the resurrection. Bring into our souls and bodies new life. Renew us this day. Renew all of those who seek you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of his name. For our good and good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through bodily fasting you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed <clears throat> and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Peter our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Amen and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. A prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, 
we believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. We love you above all things, and we desire to receive you into our souls. For those who cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into our hearts. We embrace you as if you were already there and unite ourselves wholly to you. Never permit us to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> we pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So before the final blessing, I just wanted to give a couple of words I wanted, first of all, to thank Monsignor Dan for joining us for Mass. I think this is, I'm going to take a guess and say this is probably your first time doing anything quite like this. Yeah, yeah it's good to have you with us. And I'm sure many, many people were very happy to see you on, on you know, celebrating Mass with us. I want to make mention, I guess today would have been the third scrutiny for our, our RCIA candidates and our catechumens. And I want maybe just to say, to all of them in particular, that uh, you know, we're, we're very excited still to have you coming into the church. And even though things kind of get changed a little bit, uh, we will certainly make it happen as soon as we possibly can, as well as the other sacraments, uh, confirmation for the children and First Communion, uh, all of these things, we're going to make sure that they happen as soon as we can. Uh, this coming Friday will be First Friday. And so I want to make mention as well that we're going to do something for First Friday devotion, whether it's adoration or the Stations of the Cross or something like that. We'll, we'll certainly have uh, something for First Friday this coming Friday evening. I want to make mention <clears throat> as well, we're having, we do these live stream masses Thursday through Monday. Every time it's at 9 a.m. So you can tune into that pretty much every single day. Uh, there was one other thing I wanted to say about that. Oh, Mary Queen of Peace people. I wanted to reach out to people from Mary Queen of Peace as well. I am only able to reach the people who I know, email addresses and that sort of thing. So if you have people who you think might benefit from this, whether they're from our parish or not, whether they're from Parish of the Holy Spirit or Mary Queen of Peace, wherever, if I have your email address, I will include you on that uh, email list and make you know updates known to you as well. I certainly don't want to exclude anybody who would benefit from this. So, so email me at fatherallen2012 at gmail.com, which is of course in the bulletin. The bulletins are still available. They're, they look a little different. It's mostly just reflections and that sort of thing, but you can go online onto the parish website and see the bulletin each week as well. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Go forth, the Mass has ended. And I thanks be to God. And have a nice weekend.